Module 4, The Reporting Cycle The Current Ratio The current ratio is a financial ratio that measures a company's ability to pay its current liabilities with its current assets. It is a liquidity ratio that assesses a company's short-term solvency and is used to evaluate its ability to meet its short-term obligations. The current ratio is calculated by dividing the company's assets by liabilities. Current assets are those expected to be converted into cash within one year or the company's operating cycle, whichever is longer. Current liabilities are obligations due within one year or the company's operating cycle, whichever is longer. A current ratio of one or higher is generally considered a good indicator of a company's short-term solvency, suggesting it can meet its short-term obligations with its current assets. A ratio of less than one may indicate that the company may have difficulty meeting its short-term obligations. In contrast, a ratio of greater than two may indicate that it is not utilizing its current assets efficiently. However, it is essential to note that the current ratio should be used with other financial ratios and analysis methods as it only provides a snapshot of a company's short-term liquidity position and does not necessarily reflect its overall financial health or long-term prospects. The current ratio is a financial ratio that measures a company's ability to pay off its short-term liabilities with its current assets. It is calculated by dividing the total current assets of a company by its total current liabilities. While the current ratio is an essential indicator of a company's liquidity, it may not be the only factor that creditors consider when deciding whether to allow a company to buy on credit. Creditors typically look at various factors to assess a company's creditworthiness, including its credit history, profitability, cash flow, and overall financial health. They may also consider factors such as the industry in which the company operates, its competitive position, and the economic environment. In some cases, a company with a lower current ratio may still be able to obtain credit if it has other strengths that outweigh this weakness. For example, a company may have a solid track record of paying its debts on time or have strong relationships with suppliers or customers that provide security. Accounting Worksheet An accounting worksheet is a document used by accountants as a tool for preparing financial statements and adjusting journal entries. It is a multiple-column document that lists account balances and helps ensure the financial statements are accurate and complete. The worksheet typically contains five columns, the trial balance, adjustments, adjusted trial balance, income statement, and balance sheet. The trial balance column lists all the account balances at the beginning of the accounting period. In contrast, the adjustments column lists any adjustments that need to be made to these balances, such as accruals or deferrals. The adjusted trial balance column lists the account balances after making adjustments. The income statement column shows the revenues, expenses, gains, and losses for the accounting period, and the balance sheet column shows the business's assets, liabilities, and equity at the end of the period. The accounting worksheet helps accountants identify errors or omissions in financial statements and make necessary adjustments. It is also a helpful tool for preparing financial statements and tax returns. If the balance sheet and statement of owner's equity columns of a worksheet fail to balance when the net income is added to the balance sheet and statement of owner's equity credit column, the cause could be an error in the worksheet. Some of the most common errors that can cause the imbalance between the balance sheet and statement of owner's equity columns include math errors, which occur by the simple mistake in addition or subtraction mistakes when calculating the balances. Transposition errors, which are when digits or entire figures are accidentally switched around. Missing entries, which occur when a transaction or balance not included in the worksheet. Wrong account type, which means an account that was recorded as an asset, for example, but should have been recorded as a liability. Double counting, which is counting the same transaction or balance twice. Inconsistent account balances, which means discrepancies between account balances in different worksheet sections. The accountant must carefully review the worksheet and compare the balances in each column to find and correct the error. They may also need to review the trial balance and general ledger accounts to ensure that all transactions have been appropriately recorded. Net Income Net income is a company's total earnings or profit after all expenses, taxes, and other deductions have been subtracted from its revenues or total income. It is often called the bottom line or net profit and is a vital measure of a company's financial performance. 
Net income is calculated by subtracting the company's expenses from its total revenue for a period, such as a quarter or a year. Expenses subtracted from revenue to arrive at net income include the cost of goods sold, operating expenses, interest expenses, and taxes. Net income is an essential metric for investors, providing insight into a company's profitability and ability to generate positive shareholder returns. It is also used to calculate important financial ratios, such as earnings per share, EPS, and price-to-earnings, P.E., ratio, commonly used to evaluate a company's stock price and investment potential. To calculate the net income for the year, we need to subtract the total expenses from the total revenues. Net income equals total revenues minus total expenses. For example, net income equals $185,000 minus $103,700. Or, net income equals $81,300. Next, we need to calculate the owner's ending capital balance after taking into account the net income and any withdrawals. For example, ending capital balance equals beginning capital balance plus net income minus withdrawals. For example, Ending capital balance equals $297,000 plus $81.30 minus $18,000. This make the ending capital balance $360,300. Therefore, the net income for the year is $81,300. Reversing entries. Reversing entries are those made at the beginning of a new accounting period to reverse specific adjusting entries made in the previous period. Adjusting entries are made at the end of an accounting period to ensure the financial statements are accurate and complete. However, these adjustments may reflect something other than actual cash transactions during the next period. For example, a company may accrue expenses at the end of one period but pay for those expenses in the following period. In such cases, reversing entries are made at the beginning of the new period to reverse the previous period's accrual and recognize the actual cash payment. Reversing entries simplifies the accounting process and helps ensure that transactions are recorded in the correct period. Reversing specific adjusting entries allows the accountant to start the new period with a clean slate with only transactions that occurred during that period. Common examples of reversing entries include the reversal of accruals, deferrals, and other adjusting entries. For instance, an accrual for interest expenses in the previous period may be reversed at the beginning of the new period to reflect the actual payment made. Similarly, a deferral for prepaid expenses may be reversed at the beginning of the new period to reflect the expenses incurred. Reversing entries are typically made automatically by accounting software, but the accountant can manually enter them. It is essential to carefully review and understand the impact of reversing entries to ensure they are accurate and appropriate for the accounting period. Reversing entries should not be the exact opposite of previous period adjusting entries. Statement of Cash Flows The Statement of Cash Flows is a financial statement that shows the inflows and outflows of cash and cash equivalents from a business during a particular period. It is one of the leading financial statements prepared by a company, along with the balance sheet and income statement. The statement of cash flows is divided into three main sections, operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. Each section reports cash inflows and outflows related to the company's respective activities during the period covered by the statement. The Operating Activities section reports cash flows related to the business's day-to-day operations, such as cash receipts from customers, payments to suppliers and employees, and taxes paid. This section provides insight into the cash generated or used by the company's core operations. The Investing Activities section reports cash inflows and outflows related to purchasing or selling long-term assets, such as property, plant, and equipment, and investments in other companies. This section helps investors and creditors understand how the company invests its cash resources. The Financing Activities section reports cash inflows and outflows related to financing the company's operations, such as borrowing or repaying debt, issuing or buying back equity shares, and paying dividends. This section provides information about the company's capital structure and ability to raise and repay funds. At the end of each section, the net cash flow for that activity is calculated, which is the difference between the cash inflows and outflows. The net cash flow from each section is then combined to determine the period's total cash and cash equivalents change. 
The statement of cash flows is essential for investors, creditors, and management to analyze a company's liquidity, solvency, and overall financial health. It helps stakeholders assess the company's ability to generate cash, repay debts, and invest in future growth opportunities. The statement of cash flows does not report the net increase or decrease in assets for the period reported. Instead, it reports the inflows and outflows of cash and cash equivalents related to a company's operating, investing, and financing activities during a particular period. The statement of cash flows shows how the company's cash balance changed during the period and the sources and uses of cash. It starts with the company's beginning cash balance and adds or subtracts the cash inflows and outflows from operating, investing, and financing activities to arrive at the ending cash balance. It is important to note that cash inflows and outflows may not always align with increases or decreases in assets or liabilities. For example, a company may purchase an asset using cash, which would result in a decrease in cash but an increase in assets. Similarly, a company may issue stock to raise cash, increasing cash and equity. Therefore, the statement of cash flows provides a more accurate picture of a company's liquidity and cash position than just looking at changes in assets or liabilities. It helps investors and analysts understand how a company generates and uses its cash, a critical component of evaluating its financial health. Asset Test Ratio The Asset Test Ratio, also known as the Quick Ratio, is a financial ratio that measures a company's ability to pay its current liabilities using its most liquid assets. The ratio is a more stringent test of a company's liquidity than the current ratio, as it excludes inventory and other assets that may be difficult to convert to cash quickly in an emergency. To calculate the asset test ratio, you must divide the sum of a company's cash, marketable securities, and accounts receivable by its current liabilities. The formula is as follows. Asset test ratio equals cash plus marketable securities plus accounts receivable divided by current liabilities. A higher asset test ratio indicates that a company has a more liquid position and can better meet its short-term obligations. Generally, a ratio of 1 to 1 is considered acceptable, meaning that the company has enough liquid assets to cover its current liabilities. The asset test ratio benefits companies with a high proportion of inventory or prepaid expenses, which may need to be converted to cash. It is also helpful for companies operating in industries with longer payment cycles or higher default risk, such as retail or manufacturing. However, it is essential to note that the asset test ratio only considers a company's short-term liquidity position and does not provide a complete picture of its overall financial health. Other financial ratios and metrics should be used in conjunction with the asset test ratio to get a more comprehensive understanding of a company's financial position. To calculate the asset test ratio, we need to use the following formula. Asset test ratio equals quick assets divided by current liabilities. Where quick assets equals cash plus marketable securities plus accounts receivable. For example, assume that the quick assets of ABC Corporation are $5,888,000 and its current liabilities are $8 million. Therefore, we can calculate the asset test ratio as follows. Asset test ratio equals quick assets divided by current liabilities. Or, asset test ratio equals $5,888,000 divided by $8 million. This makes the asset test ratio 0.736. Therefore, ABC Corporation's asset test ratio is 0.736, indicating the company may have difficulty meeting its short-term obligations. Generally, a ratio of 1 to 1 or higher is considered acceptable.